All right, so let's go ahead and get started with decoding our JSON response. Now, looking at the response, you can see that we get a JSON object and that contains other properties which are either an array or objects like main as well as sys for sys, which contains the sunrise and sunset. So now we need to construct some sort of a model that can be used to be decoded this JSON. I'm going to start with the weather response. Now, weather response over here is going to represent everything, basically the whole response that we're getting. Now, in this response, we need to get a couple of different things. We need to get the name, we need to get the sys sys, and we need to get the sunrise and sunset. We also need to get the main because we need to get the temp, temperature. So how do we do it? How do we go about uh, making sure that it's decodable? And also before I forget, we also need the icon. So there's a lot of different information that we need. I'm gonna go over here to weather response and start with the basic one, which is the name. Okay, so this is the name and this will be coming from right over here at the bottom. And that's the only easy one because the next one is the weather, the weather icon, and the sys, S-Y-S. So in order to get the weather, we, I'm gonna go ahead and create a property called weather. And I will go ahead and initialize it to be weather. And the reason that I am creating this as weather is that inside the weather, I'm going to go ahead and create some other properties. So let's go back to my weather and create some properties like city, temperature, which is in this case double, icon. You can see why am I doing that? The reason is that that I want the weather model to be kind of like the flat model. Now, the, if you see, we're not talking about this weather part. We're not. We're talking about one particular model that can contain the city, that can contain the temperature, the icon, sunset, and sunrise. Now, looking at the response, none of these responses or the sub-object or nested object contains the city, the temperature, icon, sunrise, and sunset. But as a whole response, there are different things that we can grab. Like we can grab the icon from here. We can grab the temperature from here. We can grab the name from here and the sunset and sunrise from here. And when we grab all of those different things, we can populate the weather object. Now, let's go back to the weather response. And the way that I'm going to do this weather response will be to performing decoding myself. But before I do that, I do need to provide some sort of a keys. So I'm going to go ahead and say enum and coding keys, string, coding key, case name, because we want to get the name, case weather which is going to be main. So this means that everything that is in the main property, which is this property right here, is going to be presented by weather property, which is we declare right here. Okay. Now we also need to declare weather keys. And the reason is that I'm calling it temperature over here, but in actual, it is called TEMP. So it's not going to match correctly when the JSON is decoding. But we can quickly fix that by creating some sort of an enum. And I can call it weather keys and coding key, case, temperature. And it can be identified by TEMP, which is temperature, which is the actual key in JSON. Now using that, now I can go ahead and implement init from decoder. 
The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get the container by calling decoder.container for a particular key, which will be coding keys.self. So basically we're getting kind of like the parent container, the outermost container. And using the outermost container, I can actually get the weather container. So I can say container dot nested container by a key, which in this case can be weather keys dot self and for dot weather. So this is going to go as and give us the weather container. Now from the weather container, we can get the temperature. So I can go ahead and say try, and I think all of them will become with try because they all can blow up. All right, so let's go ahead and try to get the temperature. I can say weather container dot decode. And what we're trying to decode is double because weather is in double. So double dot self dot temperature. Once we get the temperature, we can go ahead and create or assign or reassign the weather. And we need to pass in all of the different things. Now we don't really have the city. We don't have the, we have the temperature. We don't have the icon. We don't have uh, sunset and sunrise. So all of this information we actually don't have right now. So let's go ahead and move to the next thing. What we need is the actual icon. So if I go back, the icon is actually represented in something called a weather key, which is an array, and is represented by a property called icon. So I'm going to go to the weather response and create icon, which will be of a type weather icon, which by the way does not exist. And in the coding keys, I'm going to go ahead and provide case icon which will be weather. So icon is represented by the key weather in JSON, which is this key right here. Now there is no such thing as weather icon. So we need to go ahead and create that structure. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a separate structure and I will call it weather icon, which is decodable. The weather icon will have the string the weather icon can have a description and the most important thing, which is the icon. Now, all of these different things are actually matching. You can see I main, you can see the description and you can see the icon. We are not using the ID, so I didn't even put the ID as a property. So now let's go ahead and see that how we can go about using the icon. I'm going to go inside the weather response init function. And right when we get the container, we can go ahead and search for the icon. So I can say icon equals to try container dot decode. The type that we are decoding is an array of icons. So icon. And for the key that we are decoding, it's also icon. This is going to give us the icon that we can use. Make sure that you say dot self over here also. Perfect. The other part that we need to do is we need to get the sunset and sunrise, which is inside a different property, which is SYS. So we need to go ahead and create that also. So just like the weather icon, I'm going to go ahead and create a property SYS and I will assign it SYS, which doesn't exist. In the case, I'm going to say SYS is going to map to same thing, SYS. Now we still need to go ahead and create a property called SYS or a particular structure called SYS. So let's go ahead and do that, which is decodable. We will get a couple of different things. We will get the sunrise and we will get the sunset. So I'm going to go ahead and say sunrise, which is date, and sunset, which is also date. Now, one thing that we want to do 
is we want to make sure that these things are decoded correctly to the sunrise date and sunset date. So if I go ahead over here, I can go ahead and use the decoder. I can go ahead and get the container, which is decoder.container. I can use the container in many different ways, but I like to use the keyed by, but we don't really have the keys over here. So I'm just gonna say coding keys.self. And I'm gonna go ahead and create a private enum for coding keys. So coding keys, which will be string, which will be a coding key, case sunrise equals to sunrise, which is mapping one to one, and sunset equals to sunset. Once we get the container, then we can get the interval. So sunrise time interval equals to try container dot decode to integer 32 dot self and this will be a key for sunrise. Now why are we decoding it to time interval? Well if you go back and look at the sunrise and the sunset which is right over here you can see that it is a time uh, interval and not really a date. So that's why we are getting as, as a time interval. The same thing can be applied to sunset time interval, where we are going to go ahead and get the container to decode integer32.self.sunset. Once we have these two interval, we can go ahead and use or assign sunset to the actual date by passing in the time interval since 1970, which actually takes a number of seconds. And then we can say time interval and passing in the sun rise time interval. And the other thing that we want we can do is do the same thing for sunset. This will be for sunrise, the first one. So sunrise. And over here we can say sunset. And for this one, we're gonna go ahead and do sunset time interval. Perfect. At this point, we should have everything that we need to create our actual weather structure, which contains a flat object which contains the city, the temperature of the icon, sunrise and sunset. So we still have to make sure that we are initializing it. So let's go back to our initializer for weather response and passing all the different things that we are doing. The other thing that we need, apart from sun, sunrise and sunset, is the name. So let's go ahead and first get the SYS populated. And now I can also get the name, which is Again, try container.decode string.self for a key, which is name in this case. So now we have everything and we can just start putting stuff in this particular constructor. Temperature will be temperature. The icon will be icon dot first dot icon. Date will be sys dot sun rise and sys dot sunset. Let's go ahead and build it. And now you can see that we have successfully implemented our models. So this was a long process, but we ended up creating all the models. The next thing that you need to do is to update your services so that when you get the response and it is decoded correctly, we are firing the completion handler and passing in the response, which in this case is weather response dot weather. So let's go ahead and pass in the success and we're gonna pass in the weather response dot weather. Perfect. So now we have created our models and it's going to map correctly to our models using this particular JSON that we are getting from the open weather map. The next part that we need to do is we need to make sure that we have view models that are consuming this particular model object 
and providing, providing the required data to the view.